Welcome to the Polish Tank Destroyers Showcase. Now for full transparency, and since this will be hopefully the first of many videos, yes, I did get this idea from Quickie Baby. Every Sunday, he usually does a tech tree showcase and then will showcase the tanks from tier one up to tier 10. Now I am not gonna be copying him exactly in that kind of regard. I will be starting from probably around about tier five because I think that below that is fast enough to get there that it doesn't really matter. So from tier five onwards, I will then start playing the tanks live and showcasing my thoughts and opinions on them. They will not just be one game and done, it will be a few games and then gathering my thoughts on the tank and then giving you my opinions. Now, because I do not have every single tank in the game on my main account, I am on my press account. Now, this does not mean that I am using every single crew skill known to man or full gold, full bond equipment or anything like that. Every single tank is going to have standard equipment, the same small repair kits, small med kits, but with running food and a 50-50 ammo loadout in gold. It will also have the exact same crew, as you can see, all the way up from the tier five up to the tier seven, to which point from the tier nine and the tier 10, I'll then add intuition. Because I feel like past that point, you should have already got enough perks to gain intuition as well. So this will hopefully be as true to life for the average player and what they might experience in the game. As well as this, there are no field mods on any of the tanks apart from the tier 10, which I played a game without the field mods and then I played a game with the field mods. And in future iterations, I'll probably play a game without and then with, just to show you the difference. Anyway, with all of that out the way, and I won't be doing that intro every single time. So if you do want to refer someone back to this, you can do, and it should explain anything that needed to be explained. Let us begin with the Zadimka. The tier five has 50 kilometers an hour top speed. That is an absolutely awful view range though. This might not even be worth using the coated optics on this, to be fair. We should probably put binos. Even with binos, it doesn't get good view range. I'm not too sure what I want to put on this, to be fair. Oh, IAU. I don't know. I don't know what I would want to put on it. Because I'm definitely not going to be going up close quarters with people. It's 0.33 dispersion, which is fine. I'd rather put something on to get the view range up. So it's between binos and coated optics. And I'm pretty sure I'm going to go with binos. We'll see how this goes. Obviously, I can't put anything in the correct slot because tier fives don't have that. The gun wise is pretty okay. I mean... Having 150 standard pen and 188 premium pen, HE is pretty useless. But at tier 5, that might not be that bad. 45 pen? That's not too bad. Um, the shell velocity is actually really nice though on the premium round. So that's going to be something to keep in mind. And the standard round is literally dirt cheap. Anyway, let's begin. Okay, so province is a map where... I mean, at least this only, only gets to see up to tier 7. I mean, exactly the same as what mine should be, but, you know, at least I've done it correct on this map. We're going to try and go to this bush here early on and just seeing if we can spot anybody with binos. Now, Twitch chat has informed me that it gets a very, very narrow gun arc. So that could actually be a problem in the long run. Especially using binos. But at the same time, it might not be that bad because... I mean, realistically, we're using binos, so. I can just keep keep the hole locked, and then I don't have to worry about accidentally coming out of binos. Unless someone behind me, like this T14, keeps ramming into me. That's uh, not so good. Oh, KV220. See? All the spotting. It'd be very nice to get some shots onto this guy, though. Lovely. Oh, hello. This is two. This has a 250 damage gun. Well, 240 damage gun. That is actually very, very good for tier 5. And obviously, down at tier 5, you don't have the. Um, the range difference. That only comes into play once you get to, I believe it's tier 8. So you don't have to worry about any of that range mechanic uh, that these TDs have until tier, tier 8. How much pen do we have on our premium rounds? Was it 188? Yeah, 188. Oh look, even... So you get 188 premium pen, but you also got 1188 shell velocity. Perfection. Absolute perfection. Now... Ooh. 
I didn't actually look at the armor model, but... That is good to know. That it can somewhat bounce a little bit. Oh. Yes. That's gone well. That's an impressive shot to hit it from down there. So it has like a hundred... Um, a hundred armor on the top. Which should be enough for majority of tanks. But yeah, it's pretty penable by most tanks, I think. KV-1, right? It's, getting, it's going through every time. Even with the... Uh, 57mm gun. You can still pen it reliably with standard rounds. Yeah, this tank isn't going to bounce much in reality, is it? Well, we're on good old Redshear. Pronounced correctly. We're on this map. It's beautiful. Uh, we're going to go to the standard TD position where we can fire into the heavy tanks. Although, it being a low tier game, there might not be that many heavy tanks. As you can tell, there's only two. Um, so we'll see how this goes, but we're fast enough to move around the map, so if there is no no action over this side, then we can move uh, to find better action. Um, obviously, being a true TD positioner, we'll build our nest. Uh, we knock this one forwards, we knock this one forwards, like so. And then what we can do, we can load HE. We don't have intuition, but we can load HE and then knock this one I meant to knock that one forwards, but yeah, okay. That works, sure. We'll try and knock this one a little bit better, Max, shall we? What? How does it even get knocked over that way? Okay, whatever. That's... Uh, I have no idea. Anyway, we now begin the waiting game. I mean, our team has gone this way. So... You know, maybe. Well, there's the KV-1. Bit too slow, but... <laughs> Goodbye, little P-2640. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> nice knowing you. Oh, God. I mean, our map control is less than ideal. I'll, I'll give you that. It's definitely not good. We've, uh, yeah, no, this is not good map control. We own basically nothing at this stage. I mean, we've only seen the KV-1 so far. There's a Panzer IV Hydrista over there. I don't think that we'll lose this area. So let's go over to where this M10 RBFM... Actually, no. You know what we'll do? We'll go into this position over here. Because we might be able to shoot people like... Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure which will be better. Probably the M10 position. Because I don't think that they're going to push. But the KV-1 has three kills. He's literally just one shot every single like lightly armored tank. Because I'm pretty sure he's using the derp gun. Be interesting to see if we can get some shots on these though. There's a DW-2 camping. Which is what you should do in your DW-2 clearly. Uh, we're also going to knock over these trees to give us some cover. Some cover from uh, the castle area. I mean, the Matilda is just... I'm just going to let him kill him. He's just got obliterated by that Matilda. Let's see. Mr. DW2, will you get spotted again? Oh, hello. I mean, there is a shot there. It's a tiny shot, but... This Matilda is gaming. Like, that is... Yeah. He is slaughtering everyone in the middle. Don't just love low tier. Full of very balanced tanks. People say high tier is unbalanced. <laughs> low, low tier is even worse. I mean, there isn't much to do, though, at this stage. Oh, hello. Well, he had a lot of fun. Well done. I mean, the good thing is that I can pen a Matilda. I wonder if the tier 6 has a little bit better armor. Because it would be quite nice to play aggressively. You just can't afford to do it. You don't have the hit points in this tank. And you don't have the armor to reliably bounce stuff in this. To 
play playing aggressive. But realistically, it's two shots that you take and then you're dead. Like that's the that's the issue that you have in this tank. Okay. Then. Quite good if he dies, that Matilda. The M10 from the castle killed him. I'm not sure if I'll be able to get a shot out on this guy. Maybe. Nope. Put one into this guy. We track him, which is good. We can maybe track him again if we get lucky. Nope. Mr. Panzer IV, what are you doing? Still people from the castle though. Our Matilda at the back is chilling. <laughs> okay. I really don't like this gun arc. This gun arc is really bad. Like it's really quite annoying to play with. Because you just you every single time that you want to aim at someone, it's like very jittery. Um because of uh you having to move the entire tank. And there's no equipment that will change that, not even if you use IRM. Like you're still gonna have the same jitter because you're moving the entire uh, tank to aim basically. Can I shoot this? If I can kill him, that'd be pretty big. No. Ooh, there is a shot on him though. <sighs> and as I said, we've got another 1k combined, which is you know, nearly the the mark requirements for this tank. So it's not like we're playing awful. We're definitely playing okay. That is an open Matilda. Let's aim. One in. Hopefully we can kill him. Nice. Unfortunately not before uh, Churchill 3 dies though. And the problem with, with the Churchill 3 dying now is that this M5 will come around behind us. And then he'll be able to shoot us in the back. Which is not good. So, my choices are, do I go for this DW2? Which, I think I should. I'm just going to do it. Oh, please don't pen the artillery. Man. Oh, there's, there's a Dimco over there anyway. Yeah, alright, well, it's over. There's nothing we can do in this game. Well, not really a lot we can do. I mean, we do... More than the the asking for third mark requirement, so yeah, we definitely didn't play awfully. Is this a bad tank? I mean, let's be honest. You're going to be at tier five for a few games. I mean, how how much is it to even get this? So it costs twenty eight thousand if you want to go and get the Buza. So you're not going to be there for too long, honestly, at tier five, and you can probably just struggle through it. I don't think this is a bad tank because you get two forty alpha. The gun is amazing, but the platform is pretty bad. So definitely just continue grinding it because it's not worth skipping um, or anything like that. Um, it can be pretty boring to play because you have to play as a sniper because you'd have no hit points and you have no armor in reality. So yeah, I don't think that this is a bad tank necessarily, but you'll get through it. Anyway, moving up to the Buza. Does this tank have armor? I mean, it definitely has better armor than the tier 5. Is this going to be comparable to what you would meet for, say, heavy tanks? Let's say an ARL standard round. Mm. Okay, but what about, like, uh, Tiger 131? Okay, I mean, that's definitely very, very good against that. What about a Churchill 7? It's pretty good. I mean, the ARL has, like, a monstrous standard round, so... Uh, what else is there? M6? So they'll struggle with standard rounds against you majority of the time so you could actually play this a little bit more aggressively but then you need to really know what tanks have good stun rounds and what don't uh 400 meters view range would i recommend to drop it for hmm 
With 400 meters of view range, you definitely don't want to get rid of that, but I would like to have hardening. So let's go ahead and do that and get rid of vents, because I don't think we really need vents. Um, it drops down a little bit, obviously, but I think that that's fine for what we're, we're going to be trying to do with it. You get 280 alpha damage, so you can actually outtrade a lot of tanks. Um, and obviously, with this, you would have 182 standard rounds and 220 premium. So 220 premium is more than enough to deal with the majority of what you are going to see. Um, obviously, it being tier 6, you can meet tier 8s. Anyway, begin. Okay, so... T-150, Tiger-131, and the VK-361H. I believe the VK has enough pen. If it uses premium, it definitely has enough pen. Um, I think. Does it get the same gun as a tier 5? I can't remember. But this is definitely faster. Well, not faster. Is it faster? It feels fast. Alright, well, we're not going this way because I'm alone. So, that's good. Okay, well, I guess we go back to the middle of the map. Because I'm not going on a side by myself, because that is just asking to die for basically doing nothing in return. Can I get up this? There we go. Wonderful. We've got this. We'll do a little bit of mountain goating. SU-8 dies to a Type 58. Which tells me that they are probably quite close. Hello. He is quite close. Oh, you know. He's definitely quite close. <laughs> He's... Yeah. Is there anyone else around here, though? VK is coming. There's another Bulza. I mean, we're okay. We're holding this position at the moment. Just being here is actually quite impactful. Although, going up and around here might be even bigger because then we can kill the Type 58. And if we can kill this guy, then it opens it up quite a bit. Yes. Okay. Very good. Hello. You will pen me, I know, but... You're not so good on the side. Like, you're gonna die to the side. He's not dying. Please die. Thank you. Wonderful. Okay, this is very, very good. That RT should die. And now we have obviously spotted this guy as well. Really good so far. Let's put one into him. Man, this, this alpha is really, really nice. Really, really nice, actually. This is super nice combined with the DPM. I think they've actually tuned it perfectly. Like, with the, com the combination between DPM and Alpha. I don't know whether or not this guy's still here or if he's run all the way back. I guess we'll find out in a second. Yeah, he has run. I mean, we definitely didn't do much in this game, but... We managed to hold the flank and... Became very, very annoying for the enemy. So, it's not too bad. Wouldn't have really changed the outcome, though. Like, the enemy team were just... Worse. This tank definitely feels better. Oh, apply. It definitely feels better than the tier 5. You're a lot more flexible, it feels like. And it's 1.7k to free mark. So keep that in mind. Anything around that and you've had a pretty decent game in the tank. Especially if you do that in your uh, damage. Like That's a pretty decent game. Alright, time for Abbey, everybody's favourite map. To the left hand side to fight the heavy tanks. Lovely. Although my heavy tanks have decided they want to go, all go to the right-hand side, which is um, interesting. Right, I think what I want to do is actually get onto this corner here. Because then we can kind of yoink ourselves up a little bit and then use gun depression slightly. That way we should have a pretty decent angle on anybody that's peeking here. 
I mean, maybe this is what happens in low tier. I don't know. We already know the Tiger 131 will struggle to pair me with standard rounds. There is two artilleries as well. There's FB 304 and an M44, which are horrible to play against. I don't want to push up. The thing is, this guy shouldn't be pushing up. Like, he should come back. It's not worth it. Because then he just... If he dies, then I'm on my own on this, uh, on this flank. All right. We need to go back now because this is already falling. This flank is falling. We lose the mid. We lose this side. This is not looking good. What I should really do is go and play here. If I can play here, then we're in a little bit of a better position. One, this means that we can then go and shoot this side if that if that does fall. And two, we can still shoot over here. Ooh, sort of. Um, and they might get a little bit overcommitted. So like they might peek this, think that I'm gone, and then they push out. Maybe. And then we can track them and perma-track them in place. It's the majority of people that you're... Um, that you'll see at tier 6, you can just perma-track with 6 seconds. I know that I don't have the best hull armor, so I don't really want to expose my hull if I can help it. We are winning, though. I can't really just peek this. Oh, okay. Really? Okay, one into him. I know that he has okay DPM as well. Oh, why would he come over here though? One more into his Capola. The problem with this guy now coming here is that they, we now get flanked. Like. He should have just stayed up and helped out the T-34. I had no... There was no need to come back to help me. God, this gun arc is really annoying on this tank. Really, really annoying. The gun arc being only 5 degrees. It really makes you struggle to uh, hit shots. And track him. We're going to get shot regardless of what happens with that. Again with the tracking shot. Try and just make him shoot the uh, superstructure if we can. Interesting. I mean, it worked out okay in the end, but that was a lot harder than it needed to be. Apply. We love applying. Always apply everything. Well, I mean, this tank is pretty similar to the tier 5, apart from the fact that the platform is slightly better. The problem with this tank, do they all have the same gun arc? They all have the same gun arc. So every single tank in this line is going to have the same problem, which is 5 degrees gun traverse. So every single time that you want to try and track someone, you're constantly moving your tank. And not even IRM or anything like that will help it. Because moving the tank is just going to bloom out everything and it's just you cannot track effectively. Not even with IRM. The problem that every single one of these tanks is going to face is that even if the platform is good, the gun is good, the actual traverse is so bad that it's so hard to play. Especially when you're in kind of close quarters. Or even if you're at mid-range trying to snipe stuff. But I mean, this is definitely better than the tier 5. But yeah, the, the, the gun traverse is awful. And that's going to be the same thing for all of these tanks. You still get the same minus 7 degrees that you had from the tier 5. Um, and you still get pretty much the same kind of gun characteristics. Um, this is slightly more derpy than the tier 5. It's not really noticeable, to be honest. Anyway, moving on to the Govica. You get a pretty big pen upgrade to 202 with 245 premium. Although 245 premium, it's still not like a massive difference, but it's enough. Like, this is obviously tier 7, remember? So this is a pretty 
good round to have at tier 7. And the HE rounds have gone up to 68 pen. DPM wise, you go up a little bit. You have 420 alpha damage now, which is a massive increase from what you had before. Um, your reload time has gone up though. DPM goes up slightly because alpha difference, obviously, uh, and 0.33. So everything is looking pretty good in that regard. Um, and you do have enough U range. So this with this, that's pretty good. So this has 200 effective on the front, which is mental. Like 200 basically everywhere on like the superstructure. Uh, lower plate, very, very easy to pen 144. Although I say that, if it meets tier 6s with only like two, uh, 140, uh, that's still going to be struggling. Also be aware that you can get overmatched. This is only 20 millimeters, or sorry, 15 millimeters. So you can overmatch this pretty effectively. Um, this is a 122 caliber gun, but if we were to use something that was a bit smaller, let's say the 87, you can still overmatch this. Um, you know, it's uh, like this is a 20 pounder. So if we went for uh, 77 millimeter, you're still overmatching this. So when it rocks up and down, you can go through this up into the hole. So armor layout is good. I don't think that we need vents for this. Um, honestly, I'd rather go and use hardening again because we are going to be going into close quarters because the armor is good enough. But we're going to need optics because we just won't have enough U-range otherwise. Let's begin. Okay, so Ensk. We are in a tier 7 highest tier game with being tier 6s as well. So minus one game. That isn't too bad. Uh, it doesn't feel as fast. Definitely doesn't feel as, as quick as the last tank. And it does, definitely doesn't feel as nimble when you're turning side to side. Um, but, I mean, we do have 420 alpha damage, so... Yeah. Wow. That's half of his health gone. In one shot. In a tier 7. That is crazy, actually. That's two thirds of his health gone in one shot. I think I like this tank. Gun arc is going to always be annoying no matter what, but... The DPM, the reload time doesn't feel bad either. 420 alpha, I think, is a little bit too good for a tier 7. I would admit. It's definitely not Cheeto SP levels. Right? But this is a crazy tank. How fast does the shell go? 1000 and then 1259. Time has come. My god, this tank has insane potential, actually. Oh, you must always try and kill the artillery. I'm not going to have a shot, though, I don't think. Nope. Oh. Yeah, this tank really does have insane potential, actually. This is a mental tank. Every single tank so far, the gun arc has just ruined it. Also, we haven't low rolled once, I don't think. Wait, what is it? 420? Yeah, we have low rolled. We've, we've rolled high one, two, two. Oh, we've low rolled every time. <laughs> Nearly. Uh, I thought I had 400 alpha. <laughs> Should be able to spot these two once they fire. Be nice to get one more shot in. Okay, of course. Uh Yeah, this tank, this tank feels insane. 
apply. It's 2,371 to market, which is one of the highest that you can get. It's not as high as the Cheeto SP though. I don't think that this tank is better than the Cheeto SP. But this is actually crazy how good this tank is. I don't know why they gave it 420 damage. But that's way too much for tier 7. <laughs> and the gun, the gun isn't even inaccurate. That's the worst thing. You compare it to other tanks. Right, let's say the like Jagdpanther or something. Like the Jagdpanther has 320 with good DPM. And a little bit more accurate. But like this is not that far off the accuracy. And it has better pen. Like, what? Okay, so we're now Malinovka. We're going to run up to the hill. As I think that would probably be best. Um, this is even without turbo. But this thing feels fast enough even without turbo. Well, that's the crazy thing. But it's definitely not as good as the Cheeto SP because the armor is definitely worse and I think the gun is worse as well. Um, because the, doesn't the Cheeto SP get like AP as the premium round or something? So it's um, very, very good in that regard. Like even this, like we are more than fast enough to get to the hill. I mean, let's hope there's people up here. Otherwise, it's not going to be. We're not going to have a good time. Does this also get really good? I don't, I don't know how much gun depression that is. Like minus seven, like the rest of them, or is it a little bit more? Hello. I'm sure that this guy is having a lot of fun. Does he want to stay? Yep. I wouldn't advise it, but sure. It's just slightly worrying that only he has been spotted so far, though. Could just load HE for him, but... Oh, there we go. There's the others. Where are you going? What? Why? I uh, just... This is what I mean with the gun up. It's really bad in that regard. You try and aim and it just keeps jittering because you need to turn the entire tank. That one can pen me. We need to really get rid of this guy first before anyone else. We get lucky that we pen it with AP, uh, with AP but... That this guy shouldn't be an issue unless he hits my lower plate. But this is just broken. In this kind of scenario, it's actually broken. I'm gonna dive down off of this to get into this position. Then I should be able to shoot these. Although he might die before I even get there. This is mental. This tank is actually mental. The problem is now that obviously we, um. Yeah. We can't do anything. I need my AMX to come like, up to here or something. Ah, the classic. Um, should we ask the AMX? AMX, could you please... That is an interesting way of saying please. Play the game? We ask nicely. Maybe he will oblige us, you know? Well, I wonder what my anonymized name is today. Yes. Oh, he's moving! Where is he moving to? He's moving somewhere. I can't really move back. Because they could just push for... Ooh. Might as well put a few blind, uh, blind in. You never know. 
never know what you might hear. Usually they are like around here or something. I have no problem with like firing a few because I still have all my APCR. I don't it would be in there. Is Arimax still alive? Yes, he is. I mean, we hold the hill. The other Govica oh, controls the mid over this side. We have map control. Oh, if I go back, then they're going to flank me eventually, but... My AMX does not really want to go over this side of the map, apparently. Maybe we go all the way into the corner where the SU-8 is. Making sure that I can't... I don't knock down trees. That's the main thing. Just don't knock down any trees, and then they don't know you're here. Well, I guess we now wait. No matter where they come from, I should be able to shoot them, so... Oh! Once he goes this side, we're good. See, look, he thinks that he's going to be safe when he goes over this way. See, chat? Look, oh, just, just look at it. Look at him. He, he's going to think, you know what? I'll be safe if I go this side. Here he is. Is he baiting me? Look at him. I have never seen such a gamer. Well, at least we had a phenomenal light tank. Oh, of course, man. Of course, you just go low for no reason. Yeah, well, very fun. I'm not even going to draw this in time. I have 420 alpha, no? <laughs> Not that you would know it. 3,700. I don't know. Our, our AMX really didn't do anything this game, unfortunately. Um, right, let's now move up to the tier 8. But first of all, is this tank bad? No, this tank is actually kind of broken. Like This, <laughs> this is actually mental um, how good this tank is. I I don't understand. Like, how, why it gets 420 alpha damage at tier 7, I, will, I have no idea. And even if you're using the stock gun, this is still insane. But this is still an insane gun to grind out however much you need. You need 20,000 research for this. Right? It's not even like you need a lot to get this tank, or this gun. So the grind is not even too bad. Um, and then to get the Kalana at tier, tier 8 is a 93k. Like, so far... The only thing that is bad about this tech tree is the gun arc. And that's going to be the same throughout all of this. The gun arc is awful at 5 degrees. But so far, all the tanks have been good. They've got progressively better. So let's see if this tank is any different. You go up to 1,520 hit points, which is, yes, using hardening, not in the correct slot because we don't have field mods on this tank. That's still a lot of hit points for a tier 8. Like, that's basically a heavy tank at tier 8 is 1,500 hit points. So this is a basically a tier 8 heavy. That's, um, that's going to require premium rounds for the majority of tanks that you meet. But that is, especially if you use, how much gun depression? 9 and 7 again? Yeah, that's, that's, that's rough. Again, though, you can overmatch this. Only 25 millimeters thick. So anything that you basically come up against, they will go and overmatch you through the tracks. So if you do see someone using all the gun depression, just shoot them here. Uh, the gun-wise, the standard gun is not too bad. This is where you start to go into the damage drop-off over distance. Um, obviously, this is going to do quite substantially... Like, this is actually substantially less over distance. 
but the penetration is not that good in comparison. To be honest, this is this is a better gun over distance, but you don't get the you don't get the uh, the penetration. Although this pen is more than good enough at tier eight, like two hundred and eighty pen is very good. I might actually play with this one first. I might play one game with this and then one game with the other one. Okay, let's go play the Kilana with the stock gun to start off with. This is a weird looking gun. Right, El Haloof definitely feels less mobile than the others. Like, even more so. Like, now when you're turning, it's definitely less mobile. Although we don't have turbo on this. So we are using vents over the turbo. Um, the view range is still pretty bad. Um, maybe you could go and get rid of the vents and put optics in. Um, but for this type of tank now, we are going close quarters. More so than even the Govica. Like, that is... I would say that tier 7, you have a little bit more options in regards to what you want to do. Whereas this is now quite slow, so I'd only really play this like as a brawling tank. Um, but this actually gets an interesting drop-off with regards to it. And if we... I can't remember. Do we need to be actually aimed at someone? Uh, to show the drop-off? I can't remember. We'll soon find out. That IS is, um... No idea what he's doing. That is... Lovely. So this tank has 600 alpha with this gun. If this guy would actually move out the way, then I could kill him. But... Hello. Of course you knock out my driver. What's the uh, caliber? I don't know, because they removed the caliber. Lovely. It sounds good. Most important thing, obviously, the sound. This is mental for a tier 8. I mean, I'd be doing even more damage if I was, um... If I was using, obviously, the other gun. But this has less RNG in regards to the lowest damage that you can perform at. Yeah, don't quite get that though. Like 600 alpha for 10 seconds. Be nice if my team could like come and play the game as well, but you know. Let me get 3.4k just for doing nothing. At least you just for sitting there. This this genuinely feels like a tier nine rather than a tier eight. Like this doesn't feel like I'm like I'm fighting the same tier in regards to like an IS3, a Patriot, and a Lorraine. It really doesn't. Oh, 3.4k. Apply. How long were we alive for? We were alive for three minutes. Let's now put on the other gun, and an important thing to note is that because this is an 85mm gun, and this is a 100, they do not, they can't overmatch, like, whatever this would be. So this isn't 162. You can't overmatch anything above what would be the one on the left. So even if you think, like, you have 700 alpha, you can't overmatch something, it wouldn't be 162mm. The same thing goes for the tier 9 and 10, and 10. That is something to note. Anyway, now playing this tank with the other gun, we now have a 269 standard pen with how much premium pen? 302. Yep. Alright. Ghost Town. So now we have the bigger gun, technically. It's important also, like, I don't know, this sounds a lot more meaty than they did on the test server, so I'm guessing they changed it, because they they all sounded like 85mm guns on that test server, and they did not sound good. Um, especially when you're doing, you know, like, 800 alpha or whatever it was with the tier 10, and it just sounded like a pea shooter. It's a bit weird. 
So, I'm guessing they've changed it. I don't know. Um, Twitch chat is saying that they've changed it. So, they must have changed it. Because Twitch chat is always correct. <laughs> Let's see. Who is our first victim? I mean, a uh, person that will peak. So, as you can see, above here... You see what the, uh, the pen will be, or roughly the damage will be. So 564 is roughly what the alpha will be, obviously plus minus 25%. I should actually go up a little bit more to get a bit more of an angle. I don't know if I can shoot through this. This little, uh, doesn't look like it. And we start off with 700, yeah, 700 alpha, so we've gone down already quite a fair amount. In regards to the alpha damage, even at this sort of range. Let's go to APCR. Kind of crazy to think that I'm going to need to have 300 to pen this guy. Somewhat reliably. It'd be very, very good to get rid of that other kill on her, though. I now need to back off from this because the charioteer exists. So we now need to go back to here. And at least our bat chat is doing a good job. I forget that I have intuition. I should really train intuition. You would have intuition by now. Like, if you get up to tier 8, you'd have more than, I'd say, two crew skills. Especially with the new uh, crew we rework. It's pretty easy to get crew skills now. Oh, hello. What are you doing? go. He is now dead. 441 damage at this range. It was telling me. To give you an idea of how your bad is. Mm, I don't even really want to fight him because he can pen me pretty easily and he's in a better position than me. Hello T103, would you like to peek? Or anyone? Doesn't have to be the T103. Oh, hello. Anyone else? Oh. And he is going to pen me though. He can reliably pen me, even with his AP rounds, like standard rounds. We're already up to 3.7 though. It just feels very, very nice to play. I don't think I can get shot from there, no. So if they do come down this way, I should be able to shoot them. Although this is going to have... How much damage will I do? It's annoying that you does, it doesn't tell you on this. So it still says the... Wait, 350, it does tell you. It does. It just doesn't tell you exactly, with plus minus. It does feel weird having a... Like, it feels weird either way that you would do it. Right, because if you, if you have a gun that sounds like this, and you're doing 300 damage, it feels weird as well. So, no matter which way you do it, you can't really win. But, I mean, I think it sounds better to have a gun that sounds meaty, but does less than a gun that sounds like a pew-pew gun, and it does 800. At this type of range, we're not doing much damage, you know. We have 350 Alpha. It would be nice to clear these out though. Uh, maybe one of them will cross. I'm not sure. I like how the bat chat is just holding two of them now. And none of them want to move. 
<laughs> Out of fear. Well, the other flank's secured. That actually gets me spotted. Interesting. I can't peek any of these because they all one-shot me. If he goes back, I spot him. If he goes forwards, I spot him. So, problem is I could low roll him since he's far enough away. If I had a normal gun, I wouldn't. Well, I could, but it'd be unlikely. Wait. What the hell is he doing? Um. Okay then. I have no idea what he was doing, but there you go. Hello. Well, well played. Lovely. Can't wait for the premium version. And that's a second class. 1.3 is a second class. I think that shows you enough about how people are doing in this tank, to be honest. So, I mean, this it keeps getting better and better each time. It really does. Like, you start off with a tank at tier 5 that has a good gun, but the platform is really quite bad. But it doesn't matter because it's tier 5. You move up to this, the platform is slightly better, but it's still quite annoying. But the gun gets even better. You then get up to this, and the platform is fantastic, but it's still quite annoying with the gun arc, and the gun arc is always going to be annoying regardless of which tank you're playing. But this gun is now mental. And then you have this gun, which is now mental. So, I mean, at least... I, I would say that this gun is worse than... Sorry, not worse, but more devastating than this gun, just purely because of the, the difference in the range. right? Because I would have had more damage... Uh, in this game, if I had a normal, like, say, 600 or 550 alpha damage gun, I just I just would, because it would have made up for it. But yeah, like, th this just keeps getting better and better. And the platform that it's on now is a lot better as well regarding the um, the actual armor of the vehicle as, as well. And it doesn't even matter which gun you use. Like, both of these guns are fully usable. So, like, this is an easy grind in that regard. Um, the engine power as well doesn't really change much so yeah this is not bad grind at all okay right so we have now gone ahead and put more perks on the crew because i think by the time that you get to tier 9 and tier 10 and even tier 8 you'll probably have like a few more perks than this you'd probably have more than just a two perk or this you'd have more than a two perk crew with working on the third um i think that you'll you'll be working towards a lot more and realistically, the only thing that matters is intuition. Like, intuition is the only one that actually matters here. Um, the rest of them, I'm not even going to touch. So the only thing that I'm going to put on is intuition. And the rest of them, I'm just going to leave them. You know, so that people can't then just say, oh, well, he's got every single perk in the game. I mean, I only have intuition or extra now on the tier 9 and tier 10. But speaking of the tier 9, what happens to this tank? Well, you go from having this gun which you will also get on the tier 9 Gonkaviska, as you can see as your st standard one, which means that you don't have to worry about grinding because this is still very, very good. So you can't really complain about the gun uh, being stock. And then the top, the top gun on this is the same gun that you get on the tier 10. So it's even better. So you go up to having 800 alpha now with less lower end uh, or extended damage so you go down from 350 to now 300 which means that you are going to do less damage at 500 meters and more um, although this does cap off at 300 so even if you shoot someone at like 720 meters which is normally the maximum range some tanks will go up to 744 if you go for 700 meters you'll still do 300 uh, but interestingly you don't really gain that much more penetration value Standard pen goes up quite a bit. Your standard pen nearly goes up to the same way that you would have it on the, the premium rounds for the standard or the stock gun. 
So like you're kind of almost shifting the standard pen, sorry, the premium pen down to the standard pen with the upgraded gun. That's kind of nice. DPM goes up because you have more damage, um, but obviously your DPM technically goes down at further away than you would with the other gun. The same way that with the Kalana at tier eight, you have less DPM further away as well, if that makes sense. Um, equipment, we're going to keep the same. This still goes very, very fast. It only goes at 42, um, but still, that is more than fast enough. It's slightly faster than the tier eight, and also you get meh view range. Like, that is really meh view range. It's not very good, but whatever. You're not going to be sp out spotting people. All right, this is not the tank to go spotting. This is the tank to go and brawl and do a lot of damage. And you have 4,100 DPM if you go at 50 meters, which is, uh, yeah, yeah. For the armor layout, you have a weak spot here and a weak spot up here, like you did with the tier 8, although you didn't have this weak spot, but you did have a little tiny weak spot above it. Um, but this is obviously a lot easier to pen than the tier 8 was, although everywhere else on the tank is harder. So... Everywhere that you look, you will always be able to shoot this little spot here at the top right and this bit here, unless they go and hide it. In which case, if you imagine there's a wall here and they only expose this bit, yeah, you're not going to have a very fun time. And this is against its standard rounds of 292 pen, meaning that you're going to have to have 300 pen to reliably go through this tank. And there isn't really too many spots on the mantlet that you can actually pen regarding... Uh, just going like directly through it. There is one here with 300, but you might as well just shoot the superstructure at that point. Um, if you use premium, you can go straight through it. Even the mantlet here, you can go through it. Okay, let us begin. Okay, so we are now on Stajanki. Well, we're obviously going to go to the factory because we are not a sniping TD. No, you do not snipe with this tank. Sniping bad. Triangle does move in this tank. Triangle no move? No, no, no. That is not for this vehicle. This triangle well and truly moves. It likes to move. It it likes to move it, move it. That's not going in the video. That's <laughs> anyway, now that we are at the factory, hello. Good evening. Oh, yeah. This also gets the uh, 2k shell velocity on the premium round because you have the same gun as the tier 10. Um, so that is something else that you can look forward to. Um, wish I had a little bit better accuracy, but there you go. Oh, he's having fun, see? There we go, 722. See, obviously, even though that we're at a distance, it's technically that alpha increase will benefit this type of distance engagement better than the other gun because you have the higher alpha damage to then cut down so at like 150 meters you're still doing the alpha damage of the other gun if that makes sense Man, this guy really didn't have a good time did he that's 1650 damage done in like no time at all I don't really have a shot at this guy though do I our team is being very very aggressive in that direction though I'd like to get some angles on this. Can I go forwards, please? Can I get into here? Hello. It's worth a try to see whether or not I can shoot them. Oh, he tracked him. Hello. I'm sure he had fun. And now we obviously are at over 500 meters, which means I'm only going to do 300 damage to this. Accuracy is pretty decent. Not too bad. This is where you do kind of feel the... Like it's almost like you kind of don't want it, you know? It's like a gimmick. You don't want to have less alpha damage at this distance. Um, so once the, the, once the initial fight is over and you're done brawling... It can get kind of annoying. But they can definitely be very, very annoying to play with uh, longer ranges. I'd say mid to close range, these tanks are great. But anything past like 300 meters, you're going to start wishing that you're in a different vehicle. How many... Mm, we can't really push forwards either. Like, I can't go into the dip 
bridge and then go up and around. Oh. Lovely. I'm not too sure if I'll get a shot out on this guy. I might do if he tries to go down. Like if he goes down here, I'll be able to shoot him. Okay, you know what? It's time to move. Triangle is moving. He is on his way. You could obviously re replace the vents for a turbo as well. Um, I just think that majority of the time I'd rather have vents because it goes okay speed. It's not super fast by any means, but it's definitely not slow. Like 42 is definitely not a slow, uh, slow thing for this type of tank. Considering the amount of armor it has and the DPM and everything else, I think that vents works out quite well in that regards. Conway. Let me hear. And I swear, like, why does I always bounce off Patton the Tank? My Patton the Tank no, no have this armor. Where's little STRV gone? Is he over here? He's gonna be in one of these bushes. Six hundred twenty-nine. Not bad. Three point nine k. That's all right. Triangle should never leave the red line. It's unnatural. Very true. They must m reproduce more little triangles. So not too bad. Top on damage. Yep. Like if you play this tank as a brawler, it works really well. Like this is, yeah, this is really nice actually. It's also four k to mark, which is a lot higher than most tier nines. I want to say. Like that's like very very bad tier tens. Um. Uh, that's actually better than most bad slash mid tier 10s for the free mark. If we go and have a little look at the other tier 9s, they're sitting around about 3.3, 3.5, 3.8, 3.7, 3.8, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9, 3.9
What's that loading? You ever seen an IS-3 have this much armor? Oh. Near have I. Right. Well, we should now be able to uh, hopefully get some shots into people though. Starting off with you. Hello, sir. Making sure that I'm not going to get clipped by the uh, AMX. There we go. He is now dead. We can now push forwards. Um, is he going to expose himself to literally everybody else? Which is what usually happens. We low rolled massively. Hello. Alright, let's just keep going. We need to try and get out the way of... There we go. Right. We're now safe. We now wait until we get unspotted. Now we begin. And hopefully I can get down into here. If I can get down into here, we're in a very good position. He doesn't spot me in return, which is massive means that I'm not going to get clipped by the AMX. He'll now spot me, which is fine. Because I should be down, down low enough. Interesting. And I lose all my health to that. Which is not a good trade, but we are now in a better position. Now the Scorpion, I believe, is in one of these bushes. If he managed to shoot me. Yeah. Problem is that I'm going to die to artillery. Because they still have their M41B. Yeah, that is really annoying. Well, their M41D is dead. I'm guessing the scorpion spotted me then. They have something in like these bushes here. We should really just wait. Should just wait and just see what happens. I could load HE actually. Because there's probably the scorpion here. What how much HE do I get? Oh this is eight hundred as well. Ugh. But it doesn't lose pen over distance, apparently. I'm not gonna lie. I want 1k alpha. Give me 1k alpha. Go on. What does HE only do 800? I mean, we have good combine either way, so it's fine. Now we need to, get to uh, try and locate the artillery. Obviously we are going to be keeping with HE because we, lo we won't lose damage over distance. Lovely. Nice. 3.9. Not too bad. I mean honestly, this tank is just the same tank at tier 8 but just better. They have actually done an incredible job with this line. They really have. There's some lines in the game that you feel like is a little bit hit or miss when you upgrade. For example, when you go from the T-32 in uh, the American line to the M103. Like, you kind of feel like you're almost downgrading. Like, because this has a really, really good turret and this has an absolutely awful turret. Right? Yeah, sure, you get a better gun, but there's some there's sometimes like that where you think, eh, I don't really like it. Whereas with this... It feels like the tank just gets better and better each time. It's nice. I really, I really actually like this. The only thing that I don't like, and I'll say it again, is this gun traverse. The gun traverse is horrible. But now, we move up to the star of the, the tech tree. The star of the show. Witzkowitzka. So what is the difference between the tier 9 and the tier 10? Well, you get exactly the same gun. Literally exactly the same. But this has a better reload time, better accuracy, 
therefore better DPM, and you just have better armor. This is what it looks like against itself with 292 standard rounds. Yeah, these aren't weak spots. The only weak spot that you have is a little capola at the top, and if it's using all of its 7 degrees of gun depression, good luck hitting that. But just like with the rest of the entire line, you have the underneath the superstructure or the underneath the hull being able to be overmatched. So if it is angled like this at you and you can see the tracks, you can just shoot up into the tracks and you will pen. That being said, with premium rounds, even then, if it's fully angled at, you know, all of, all of the gun depression, you're still going to have a struggle. But you should be able to pen it apart from at the sides here. But if it does go at an angle like this, this then becomes very, very weak. So keep that in mind. Uh, this obviously is the best armor out of all of them by far. Definitely an upgrade from the tier 9. Um, but is it going to be super broken? No, because as soon as someone has over 300 pen, they'll go straight through you. So majority of tier 10s that you meet, the premium rounds will just decimate you. You also will go slightly faster at 45 top speed now. Obviously, we are not using a turbo um, at this point. But this still goes 45, so then it's even faster than the tier 9, which just makes this now the complete package. I really, really like how it goes from having not that much uh, kind of like this kind of dispersion to then upgrading. You get more DPM. Like, look, you go from 3,400 to then 4,100 and then 4,500 and you get better uh, dispersion. And then with the mobility, you go from 40 to 42 to 45 and you also get better uh, specific power to weight every single time as well so each time you are just improving the tank incremental upgrades which is lovely like that's how every single tech tree should be it should be a similar style of tank and then it just goes up a little bit rather than like i said with the t32 and the m103 which is just weird and then the then you get the e5 which is just then even more weird because it's nothing like the m103 but people are playing pretty well in this thing. It gets 4,600 to free market, which is up there with some of the best tanks in the game for a tech tree tank. You get exactly the same uh, standard rounds and premium rounds, the exact same gun as the tier 9. The only thing that is different is the accuracy and the reload time, and therefore the DPM is also better. And still you do not have maximum view range, but whatever. <laughs> like It really doesn't matter for this tank. Okay, so on Lakeville, we are going to go to the Valley of Death. The Valley of Doom and Gloom, because, well, we want our accuracy, not our accuracy, our alpha damage to be as good as is humanly possible. Um, and obviously you still get the 85 pen, which doesn't care about the distance for the shell with HE. We will ask for help. Please come, Mr. 60TP. If they go up, they uh, they get spotted and they should get shot. And even with heat at his angle, that's not going to go very well for him. I really don't know why my 60TP doesn't want to come and play the game though. Thank you artillery, very cool. Uh oh. Okay, well, we both miss, so that's fine. So he can't peek. I don't really care about the spotting or whatever, but he can't peek. I kind of want to shoot this FE, though. I reckon the FE will peek me again. Yep, lovely. Well played, FE. Why has my sound gone, like, weird? That was weird. I don't know why my sound, like, disappeared after the FE hit me. That's like a new type of stun. Please, go away. See, playing here is really, really awkward. Oh, finally, my CCTP has come to help. Playing here in this type of tank is really, really awkward because of the gun arc. Literally for no other reason other than the gun arc. But that's the only real bad thing. 
And now that you're at, you're at tier 10, that's literally the only bad thing about this tank, is the gun arc. Because even by now, you learn about the gun mechanic, you understand the way it works, and, you know, what to expect out of the gun mechanic. Um, and hopefully by now, you've learned to go how, how to use it effectively and get around it. And which, which spots work, which spots don't. Because every single spot that works for the tier 8 will work for the tier 10. Honestly, the only bad thing is, is this artillery. Like, this RT is really quite annoying. 658. Even at that type of distance. The shell velocity is so fast on this. 2k shell velocity being the fastest shell velocity in the game. You really feel it, especially when you're sniping at longer ranges. It's so nice to have. Like every single time that you think you're not going to make the shot for whatever reason, you know, like with the gorilla moving back at that kind of speed, you then just think to yourself, well, yeah, but I'll just pen it. It's fine. You know, I can still hit it. Can't overmatch him. If I had a 150, I could overmatch that, I'm pretty sure. But because I have only have 85, it is 85. I can't tell because of the caliber, they removed it. But because I only have 85, I can't overmatch his... Uh, into his tracks. There you go. This arty really wants me, by the way. Like, only me. He, do he doesn't care about anyone else. He wants me. We're going to go up here to the left. What? Ah, uh, I... Okay. Yes, sure. Whatever you say, game. Oh, can I get one more shot in? Okay. One more big damage show. There we go. 800 to finish it. Lovely. Very, very nice. 6.9k combined. That is not bad at all. Now that we've done that one game, what we're going to do is we're going to max out the crew skills. Well, not crew skills, but the field mods. We're going to choose all the field mods that we want, which will be left, right, right. Um, for this one, we're going to choose reload time because, of course, we're going to choose reload time um, in this type of tank. And then suspension repair speed and engine power. Um, although, saying that, what is my reverse speed? Mm, my reverse speed is not actually that great. I could, I would buff the uh, the reverse speed actually. That should be okay. And what we can do is also then select survivability, because then we will get the bonus for the hardening. So now we will see what it is like with the full field mods for our last game of the video. Right, Pearl River. This has big, big potential. We go to the heavy to uh, the heavy side, and I mean IS-7, 277, and E5. They're not really too much to deal with, um, especially with our premium rounds, if we want to use them. So we shouldn't have too many issues. I mean, I really don't think you need turbo, because you're faster than the majority of heavies. I think vents just adds more to it. Like, every single time that I, you know, get up to top speed, it just makes me realise that, realistically, I don't need a turbo on this. And we're not going to go down. We'll make sure we stay up to try and use as much of our gun depression as possible. 974 I just rolled for. Uh, this is a little bit awkward. 869. Alright. Oh, please... I'm, I'm, I'm going to die because of this guy. Well, this uh, did have potential, and then we got YOLO'd, so... Lovely. I don't know why our IS-7 didn't come this way. I guess we play over this side. We lost all of our health at the start. But literally nothing in return. I mean, we're even on the trade, but really that doesn't make any difference. Like we, just, we literally just got a YOLO by an IS-7, so... 
We can try and kill like the EBR or something over here, I guess. If he pushes down. I have no idea what RR7 is doing. We basically did, we had we basically had one less heavy in this game. This is awkward. Well played. I don't know. I think we just go this way. Try and get out the way of the T22 med. I don't really want to get proxy spotted. Really? Withdraw from that position. 902. <laughs> okay. So that is the Tech Tree Showcase for the Boitskavitsa. Hopefully you enjoyed, hopefully you found it entertaining or just useful in some way, shape or form. If you did enjoy it, leave a like on the video as it does help me out greatly. And I'll see you all in the next one.